Yeah. Boom today, all you sports fans out there in the two bowl sphere. Final four weekend. Welcome to Mass Track Sports Rack Out. It's your on talk radio version of the OMSR. I am your brief but concise host, Will the Alternative ESPN Sports Thrill. Always do a little show like this. Let you know the clip order coming up and the whys and wherefores. Get a significantly longer highlight reel on a consistent basis, plus a quickie sport rant of the segment. But as part of, part of Gen 5.0 coming up, I'm going to do the sport rant and all the legalese mumbo jumbo after the fact. So, talk briefly and concisely about year 26 of the Slab Fests, or as you could refer to it, the NCAA Slab Dunk competition. Not enough time to bring you all the dunks, plus, you know, there's like, there'll be bits and parts where I edited out what I could. Pixelation going on, ESPNU, and uh, some of them upper channels here in SoCal, they just start to conk out. So, a quickie sport rant, what will be discussed is how Adrian Payne and Corey Jefferson got robbed, and then uh, just way too many tens being thrown out like they were candy from the judge, judges panel. Roll clips. So we're set for the Demi Slam Dunk Championship. Round one here in Moody Coliseum in Dallas. A standing room only crowd in here. And let's take a look at our eight contestants in the Slam Dunk competition. We Anthony Early, my choice. Chase Feeler, Ronald Roberts Jr., Michael Craig, Corey Jefferson's Jimmy's choice, Walt Lemon Jr., Marcus Lewis, and Adrian Payne, who is Mr. Dockage's choice to win the championship. Here's the rules. Eight competitors, top four advance to the semis, top two to the final. Judging based on a ten-point scale, four celebrity judges we told you about. And then Chuck Johnson's over there. He's our fans voter on Twitter. Round one, one dunk. you got 30 seconds. Semi-final, two dunks, 30 seconds each. The two scores are averaged out. And in the final, you got 60 seconds to do one. If the player exceeds the time limit, you forfeit the dunk. And for the for the most part, for the most part, you don't want to miss too many times, even though the time allotted. Let's take a look at some of our past winners of the Sketchers Performance Rewind. Take you back, 1990 slam dunk champion, Michigan's Romeo Robinson. Ended up being the 10th pick of the 90 NBA draft by the Atlanta Hawks. With that, he won it back in 1990. Our votes on Twitter are in, and what we expected has come to pass. That it was a perfect score for Adrian Payne from everybody. All of you out there and the four celebrity judges here. So the first round, 50 for Adrian Payne. What's he do for an encore? I think that's uh, maybe the question. So Dan Dockett's choice, Adrian Payne still in it. So is Jimmy's choice from Baylor, Corey Jefferson. And Corey... Is next up. We've had the slam dunk competition in a long time. We've done a lot of look at that. He, every coach, I mean, every celebrity judge, I should say, is up. I mean, from the time he brought the basketball over to Lacey and Touches to the finish. so far with the perfect 50 and now again Marcus Lewis from Eastern Kentucky. Don't count this kid out. This kid has special hops. His team lost in the second round of the NCAAs to Kansas. And again, he's got a sprained right foot. Didn't seem to bother him with his first dunk. I'd like to see him healthy. Yeah. Judges here. Great. 
Brad, you mentioned the best vertical under Tom Izzo, Michigan State, a 38-inch vertical on a 6'10 body. That's a good combination. Uh -oh. It's hard to beat. We got two balls involved. Here we go for a double. One, two. <laughs> you can just tell he's one of the favorites of the players here as well. Hey, he's one, he wants to win this competition. He came here to win the thing. He did, and it was, when I took him, I'm thinking, well, big guy, dunk contest, usually a little guy. Yeah, like I mean, Ken Howard, no question. <laughs> that kind of move. But I'll tell you what, Jimmy, he has some energy, obviously great hops. And, you know what, bit of a showman, too, which I didn't see coming. This one's coming right into our camera. Bang, bang. Yeah, he's got a purpose with a beautiful little princess sitting on the side of the Rudy Mahan. He has a special purpose tonight. Well done. Boy, so another perfect score from the judges here. Has he grown up? And he really has grown up, Adrian Payne, any time. Is he a skinny kid coming out of Dayton? Yeah. And he's got to be a first-round draft choice. I don't know. He turned his jump shot and threw his three-point range. you got to get on Twitter right now, folks, because we've got a three-way tie. Oh! I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> Adrian Payne says, whoops. That dude's only 6'3". That dude ran in here fast. Really fast. Finally conference. Now, even if he hits the same thing, it's not going to be as good a score. And it was a beauty. And he did get up at a second attempt. I don't know how much he's going to sway the jump. See what he's come up with. From the free throw left. I know who's that. That was either Dr. Chair. Yeah. That is not easy to do, folks, and not many people. In flight from 15 feet. Yeah, you get it. He's not stepping over it. On it. Boom. Oh, Lewis and Corey Jefferson in the championship final right now. And only one dunk. You got 60 seconds to do it, but it's all come down right now to two dunks. Two dunks, four celebrity judges, and what you're doing at home. Corey Jefferson, he was Coach Jimmy Dykes' choice to win this event. Wouldn't it be fitting if Mr. Dykes finally got something right after all these years? <laughs> it would be a way to sign off the air, wouldn't it, partner? Yep. Corey up behind his back and lost the handle. Plenty of time. Got 60 seconds. I'm not sure if he knows what he wants to do at this point. That's not bad. Behind the back. Up and in. And his teammate meets him there. Good. Quick score. Jason Witten and Jason Garrett with nines, I've noticed. An impressive dunk. It's just a second dunk, and his body language was so slow moving into it that nobody got excited. Nothing easy about that Not at all. If Lewis was smart, he would get this crowd going a little bit right now. And only a 37 from the four judges here on this dunk by Corey Jefferson. He's going to be 37. He's going to have some help. And Dan's favorite guy in the yellow shorts makes an appearance again. It's not a dunk contest without a guy like that, right there. I've never been to one that doesn't have one looking just like that. And he'll show up at the next dunk contest tomorrow night somewhere. That same dude. No one knows his name. He'll show up he tomorrow does. night. The, the unknown assist. Marcus Lewis up over and missed it. In Marcus Lewis, second chance. Uh oh, he's got trouble now. I think our guy's pulling the string on him a little bit, dropping it down a little bit. He's running out of time too. Now it's just stand still, I guess. And he handled it home on that one, but is it good enough? Is it good enough? It's going to be really close. Celebrity judges look like they're giving him nines. I don't know. I, I, I gotta go with 40. 
Corey Jefferson. That's, that's impressive, but I'm with you. I gotta go with Corey Jefferson just because, because he used to guy me yellow. I could, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, Corey Jefferson wins because of this young man's selection of you and the yellow shorts come out here and help me. I think at that point you 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 default your chance to win, don't you? You're basically saying, Corey Jefferson, the belt is yours when you go to that spot. I think you might be wrong, guys. But we're still waiting. We're tabulating. We're waiting on Twitter, believe it or not. Twitter's That's gonna, what we've come to in this day and age. We're waiting on Twitter to crown a champion. Twitter's going to agree with Dan Dockett tonight. Well, we'll see. I don't know. Lewis. Good stuff there. So you get a two for one on this episode. <clears throat> this this episode. Corey Jefferson, yeah, he I almost think he did not get the crowd into it because he didn't think he was gonna make it on his first try. And I think with the judges the ju the judges panel, thank you, forgot is Corey Jefferson is left handed. Yes, someone ambidextrous who you always have to be in basketball. I'm ambidextrous, but I still prefer my right. Going a baseline or driving, but can go left almost as well. But you are, even when you're ambidextrous, you're going to prefer left to, to your right or vice versa. So that was pretty cool what he did there on his first try. A 37? Wow. Adrian Payne, that three-way tie there at the end, and he doesn't get into the final. He, he pulled out all his good stuff too soon. Sport rat number two. Yeah, you notice on the panel, you know, it's ethnically diverse and whatnot, a bunch of Dallas sports figures. This is set in the final four after all. City. But uh, <clears throat> don't you think maybe some of these guys should have, like, a little bit of basketball pedigree, Avery Johnson notwithstanding, in the sense of having been able to dunk? I'm pretty sure Avery never dunked. The other guys, I can't speak to that effect. Now, me being Scandinavian, ethnicity-wise, being a white guy who could dunk at only 6'3", you know, I would not necessarily have given out a 10 on all of those 10s that were being. They were just throwing them out there like rice at a wedding. Too easily impressed is my suggestion to you. So what do you all think? It's like, yeah, well, maybe uh, you, know, you should have had to have been able to have dunk or play basketball at all. Be a little more discerning. You know, where are the 8.5, 9, and 9.5 cards? Didn't see a whole lot of those going on. All right, so all the video highlights courtesy to ESPN and the respective universities profiled vis-a-vis -vis their player. Congrats to Marcus Lewis, Eastern Kentucky. Even if they didn't get far in the tournament. That was another thing I noticed. All these dudes, these are teams, universities, respectively, they were all in the tournament or the NIT except for Bradley. It would have been interesting to have seen if Wichita State and Michigan State made up to the Final Four. Who would have, who were the alternates that they are, who they, you know, the organizers of this event would have picked if not for Adrian and Clay Anthony. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. No silly DYs while you're celebrating. Final four on the Nat Champ. We are later out to here.